Hello and welcome back. And that is right. Today we want to talk about this. This is the Acasys TBU405 Plus, a pocket sized Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 3 docking station. Now, there's going to be a number of you immediately who have already looked into docking stations before and gone. Who cares? Docking stations are 10 a penny. There are plenty out there in the market. Why would we give a fig about this? And you're right, there's plenty out there, but very, 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 very few of them are pocket sized and Thunderbolt 4 and have themselves an M2 NVMe drive inside and play off of USB power. This is probably one of the most interesting docking stations I've talked about for a long time, simply because whenever you hear the words Thunderbolt docking station, you think two things. Number one, you think enormous power adapters, huge, hulking great PSUs that knock around in the background that you have to clunk around in your bag and find a mains outlet in order to make the most of them. The second thing you think of when it comes to docking stations is size. Most docking stations are quite large. Traditionally, Thunderbolt docking stations are around about 25 centimeters long, maybe about 15 deep. But when it comes to this device, it is legitimately, genuinely pocket-sized. Now, it's available right now on Amazon for about 119 quid. You can get it on Ali for a little bit less, about 92 quid. But with that, there's always going to be a shipping. Don't fall for that old trick. Um, the system arrives with uh, a couple of Thunderbolt, um, not Thunderbolt, uh, display ports there. You can run either one 8K monitor at 60 hertz, or you can run two 4K monitors there at 120 hertz. Alongside that, you've got a Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 3 compatible USB Type-C 40 gigabits per second connection you've also got a secondary one there that supplies power more on that later on we've also got a usb type c and an additional usb 3.2 gen 2 10 gig connections there on the rear now there's a lot of connectivity but straight away i'm going to go in with a criticism where the hell's the LAN port? Because I'll be straight with you, when I have a docking station, when I use my Thunderbolt um, uh, Thunderbolt 4 Windows laptop when I'm on the go, I know there's some of you on there when I'm thinking about Windows, I'm like, why haven't you gone Mac, you loser? Just give me a break. But where's the Ethernet port? Now, no doubt I could grab myself a nice, convenient, very affordable USB to Ethernet adapter, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to give up one of these high-powered USB ports on here. So straight away, if you're looking for a Thunderbolt dock that's got Ethernet, maybe give this a miss. But I've already touched on the thing that I like about this quite a lot, and that is the fact that inside we have a Gen 3 times 4 M2 NVMe slot there. The system arrives um, with not only a Thunderbolt 4 cable, which is weirdly rare. You'll be amazed how many docking stations don't actually frigging include a Thunderbolt 4 cable. I know they're expensive, but still. Um, it also arrives with, mm, I would say, pretty, you know, I'm going to say it, pretty piss poor um, thermal pads there. They're very, very thin thermal pads that it's included with. Now, the reason they're thin is because this system doesn't leave a lot of room for error. If you try to use any kind of NVMe that has a little heat sink attached onto it, it's just simply not going to fit inside this little enclosure there. But I will say, I, you know, I've tested it with several different NVMe, something you'll see later on in the video. It goes together very neatly. Now, in terms of uh, cooling when in operation, the system has all manner of passive cooling all the way around the system. Ventilation on every side, indeed the whole thing, is metal from top to bottom and the top of it has that nice ridge heat dissipation but the base of the system also has an active fan generating the kind of noise that you would expect kind of a comparable to that of a laptop fan it's also got the rubber feet there at the bottom uh, when it comes to noise i will say we'll cut to it in just a moment it is noticeable i will say that fan there's no means to manually you know scale up or scale down the fan unfortunately so the noise that fan is making although it will ramp itself up uh, up and down as the temperature needs you have no control over that fan here's how that fan sounds
and all the way through my testing that noise persisted regardless of whether I was accessing the drive or just leaving it idle so the temperature sensitivity there didn't seem too nuanced I will say though that there is one thing about the design of this that I think is going to absolutely impress and win over half the audience and absolutely piss off and annoy the other half and unfortunately I'm slap bang in the middle and that is the fact that this case is toolless you don't need a screwdriver to get to that m2 nvme what you do is you go ahead you get yourself an m2 nvme you slot it inside included with the system are rubber plugs for installing your drive it goes inside there i would normally have screwed it in and you go ahead you pop that on and it's magnetically attached that means installation of m2 nvmes is super easy to a point where you can almost use this as a docking station but keep in mind of course hot swapping is not going to be the uh, available there now why would half the audience be annoyed about toolless design well remember i said that this device would go inside your pocket that's how easy that bottom bit comes off i had to vigorously shake it don't get me wrong but imagine this was in your bag. Imagine this device was in your pocket while you're moving and just slightly disjoins. Why there isn't any means to lock that uh, there, that uh, removable panel kind of confuses me. And the result is that although I like how easy it is to install the drives, there's no denying that there is definitely potential there for the bottom to easily be removed, which could be problematic to a scratch or moisture that getting onto the drive and the internal boards. Now, the subject of internal boards is worth highlighting. This tiny little enclosure actually has quite a lot of comprehensive chips on board, as you would expect from any kind of high-end docking station. Opening it up and going through some of the official pages, we're able to identify that the chips inside include the following. There's a GL3590, which is the USB controller there at the top. On top of that, you've even got um, certain uh, kind of splinter ones as well, such as the ASM2464, which is a Thunderbolt and USB Type 4 to NVMe controller to manage the internal storage drive. You've got a JHL um, 7440, which is a Gen 3 Thunderbolt 3 controller. And finally, the RTL9210B, which is a, another USB uh, controller, but that's a USB to NVMe bridge, allowing you to take advantage of all the different connections to access the storage drive inside at all times and allow that cross utilization of different peripherals connected to all the different ports and components on this for such a small enclosure there's a lot going on inside and the fact that most users would have assumed a docking station like this is enough the fact that you've got the m2 nvme included inside at gen 3 times 4 speeds no less is really really impressive now the reported performance uh, on this was reported at 2800 megabytes per second utilizing a samsung 980 pro by the brand themselves are we happy with that are we buffering let's head over get this connected up and talk through some of the performance now when testing drives inside the Acasys TBU405 Plus docking station here we went a few different ways we know that it's got three times four bandwidth afforded to the M2 NVMe slot inside so I went ahead and installed a Seagate 1TB Ironwall 525 uh, Gen 4 NVMe as you can see on screen hopefully if not immediately you'll see that the although it is a Gen 4 times 4 drive it was uh, downgraded to three times four because of this enclosure that was perfectly expected uh, the OS drive on this system by the way uh, this is a Windows 10 Pro system running on an uh, next storage uh, SSD inside that's your Gen 4 1 TB so we've got no fears of an internal OS bottleneck now in AJA uh, the drive was hitting performance numbers of 1700 megabytes per second write and 2690 megabytes per second read pretty respectable numbers but it was that write number that kind of got me a bit cheesed off there because it always makes me wonder when you look at a lot of marketing materials how they always prioritize read over write and of course write for a lot of users particularly editors is going to be a little bit more important it's a good number for an external drive at 1700 but what about if we used a larger drive would that give us any higher performance numbers we went ahead with the adlink a95 8tb m2 nvme ssd and this is an eight terabyte drive which they say is compatible with this enclosure in an aja 
we saw 1580 megabytes per second write and 2700 megabytes per second read on average so again similar numbers and the 8TB with more flash NAND to read from didn't give us anything more than that and when I went over to Atto Disk Benchmark, Atto Disk Benchmark once again reported 1.7 gigabytes per second write on average and 2.89 gigabytes per second average read on a 256 megabytes per second file. Now throughout the course of that testing I thought it was worth keeping an eye on the temperature. Generally the temperature got to around about 60 to 62 degrees at peak temperature and that was with utilizing uh, one of those SSDs the Seagate there with the thermal pad that this drive system was included with however I will give kudos to them that again that 60 to 62 number isn't high anyway for this kind of testing but on top of that the fact that the cool down for the system thanks to that active fan was actually pretty darn good and the cool down into the 40 degrees mark there was very quick and impressive Finally, we wanted to test the docking station capabilities of this and whether the bandwidth afforded to that Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 connectivity could be utilized. I went ahead back with that Iowolf 525 SSD in AJA, but then I also connected a Kingston uh, DC1000B M2 NVMe inside an external USB enclosure and connected it to one of the 10 gig USB ports and additionally connected a SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD, uh, which was a Gen uh, gen 3 times 1 uh, gen 1 so 5 gigabits per second uh, USB into one of the other available ports and then I conducted a full AJA performance measurement across all three drives simultaneously to see if we would be able to saturate that um, available 3 to 4 gigabytes per second bandwidth there and for the most part it was saturated because all of the tests were slightly out of alignment the up and down wasn't always fully even but we were able to saturate a decent amount of performance although I will say that both of those USB drives seem to be both throttled down to 5 gigabyte uh, gig, gigabits per second throughout the testing there and again we tried to utilize the 8tb drive but of course because of the enclosure scale we weren't able to take advantage of that drive without you uh, losing some of the cooling on top overall i'm happy with the performance we're seeing here but i will say that the right numbers were nowhere near as good as that of the read unfortunately so in conclusion I'm happy with it. I think as a pocket-sized Thunderbolt docking station with an internal storage drive, this is as good as it gets. I've not seen a docking station this small, this capable in Thunderbolt and still being USB powered there via that Thunderbolt port. Do keep in mind, of course, if you're going to utilize multiple displays or you're going to utilize more of these ports, then you are going to have to utilize more power. Indeed, throughout my testing, you may have noticed it earlier, I did have to connect a, an additional USB Type-C for DC power in order to provide more power to more devices. So do keep that in mind. But of course, the minute you go down big displays, chance Chances are you're not thinking portably at that point anyway an additional DC power via a USB port makes a bit more sense but overall I like it I wish it had an RJ45 network port and I wish there was a way to lock this wonderful tooler system and I wish the right performance numbers were better than they were and I think they could be a little bit clearer and fairer on their advertising but in every other regard to its scale to its power consumption to the temperature management to the internal cooling system slightly less so to the noise I'd say this does deliver and as a pocket size docking station at Thunderbolt 4 performance levels for about 100 nicker, it's very hard to argue with what you're getting there unless you want to go to the bigger boys at Sonnet and pay two or three times the price. What do you guys think? Let me know. Apart from that, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in this, I've put links in the description to both Amazon, AliExpress, and I've also added B&H as well. So if you were going to buy from one of those shops anyway, why not use those links? Doing so means that myself and Eddie here and As Compares we get a little bit extra from that and it doesn't cost you anything extra to use those links and it allows me and him to keep doing what we do it's just us here at nas compares running the website running the free advice sections and running all of these videos it really helps us out thank you so much but apart from that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time